questions, big answers. It's the show where we talk about very basic questions that I find on the internet, as well as some questions that are sent in to me regarding the world of being a reseller. Everything from eBay to Amazon, Posh, Mercari, and more. We uh, tackle these questions and we try our best to give factual answers to everyone out there watching. The last time we were on, we talked about what to do when somebody requested a different shipping address uh, or they wanted to, yeah, change the shipping address after an order was placed and just how to go about that. And even with that one, there was a lot of opinionated people in the comments in some of these groups uh, saying, well, this is the way that I like to do business and it works for me. And uh, as I've reiterated before in the past, Your way of doing business can cost people a lot of money. And even though you might be all right with absorbing that loss, it doesn't mean that other people are going to be all right with absorbing that loss as well. So as always, let's stick to the facts. And hopefully this video will help somebody. And if this question pops up in a Facebook group or you see it and somebody's having a little bit of trouble or maybe you Googled it yourself and you got brought to here, feel free to share it on around. That's what's going to help us grow and be able to bring more new content to you. So this question this week comes in from Olivia. She asked, I've been selling on other platforms, but I decided I would try out eBay. I listed an item for a certain price, which was uh, which had best offer on it and then had someone offer more than my buy it now price, which I accepted. Is this normal? Am I getting scammed? And believe it or not, I've seen this one pop up a few times. Generally speaking, when this happens, you're gonna see somebody with really low feedback. That's usually the first indicator that something's gonna be a little bit awry. Now, to immediately jump to it being a scammer is a bit of a reach. Uh, The 10 years or so, maybe even going on 12 that I've been on eBay now, I have not had much experience with scammers, but I have had my situations where I've had to get the police involved. I've even had a sting operation happen with one of my packages in Washington when I shipped out a MacBook Air and uh, it went to a fraudulent address. So always, you know, Err on the side of caution, but don't jump to the assumption that it's going to be a scammer right away because it is a pretty rare thing to happen. Now, there are going to be scummy buyers out there, but it doesn't mean that they're scammy buyers, which is a big difference. So I wrote down some of the most uh, or most common reasons that I saw. First one is that the person who's making this offer isn't familiar with the platform. So they're brand new to eBay. They're trying to figure out how everything works, but they don't have a solid bead on how exactly it works. Uh, On top of that, sometimes I've seen people miss key the number that they're looking to put in. You know, the item could be a $10 item and they punch in $100 and they send that offer off and they didn't mean to. Now, if you're in a position where you've submitted an offer and you've done it by error, you happen to be watching this, you're always welcome to do a uh, offer retraction or you can contact eBay in the event of an error as well. Uh, the other reason I see a lot is that it's a user who isn't very tech savvy. It goes without saying we have a lot of uh, senior citizens on the eBay platform doing purchases. And if you're selling an item that's generally catered to that type type of audience and you see that happen, that's going to be another indicator uh, that it's just an error or, um, you know, they're not too sure about exactly what they're doing. Uh, Some of the other confusion happens when you have issues with shipping. Uh, The person might be trying to do a free shipping situation. So let's say you have an item for $20 and your shipping cost is $10 and, uh, you know, somebody offers, uh, I don't don't know what the scenario would be, but they might offer a a situation where they feel they're getting a, a shipping included or uh, they're they're not actually getting that because of the offer amount that they put out there. Uh, sometimes this even happens with global ship customers. They're, they're going to see numbers that are uh, reflective of, uh, of inclusion of the global shipping rate. So the offer might be higher, but they think that they're getting the shipping included. So let's say you have a $20 item, free shipping domestic. Uh, your global ship, they're seeing an extra $25 for their global ship. So they might send you an offer that splits the difference. It might be like a $30 off and you're like, why are they offering me $10 more? They may be thinking that they're getting the global shipping included as well, which is something that does happen if you're a global ship seller as well. Um, With these types of situations, the best thing that you can do, which I know it can be frustrating to some, is uh, you know just do business with good ethics. Go ahead and decline that offer and then send the buyer or would-be buyer a message and explain to them the situation. Say, hey, I noticed that you submitted an offer on an item that I have. It's listed for $20 with either free or X amount of dollars of shipping. And I just wanted to touch base with you as this kind of doesn't really work. You you either offered too much or just something's off the mark. So I wanted to touch base with you to see what we could do to be able to get this item into your hands and, uh, you know, 
be able to complete the sale, but try and do it with ethics. It's just important to remember that some of these people that are going to be buying, you know, there's there's going to be somebody's mother or father and just trying to do the right thing. And then uh, especially with the international buyers, you know, certain things uh, on the platform don't translate properly going from one country to another, especially with things like currency getting mixed up into the equation as well and auto translators too, especially if your description has uh, stuff in there talking about taking offers or doing bulk deals or stuff to that effect. It can be really confusing for our international buyers. So this was another episode of Small Questions, Big Answers. Make sure you stay tuned for our next episode. It may be a week out. It may be a few days out. Next question is going to be uh, regarding estate sales. Somebody who's looking to go for the first time and they need a little bit of advice. So that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy me, make sure you check out all the links down in the description. Hit that like button. Really appreciate it. And then uh, go ahead and click on subscribe if you enjoy this because we're going to have a lot more of these coming in the future. Thanks so much for watching. Once again, my name is Jay with the Facebook group Bolarama Pickers Lounge. Have a wonderful day.